Welcome to Dashway Talks, a show powered by Dashway Consulting, a China-based strategic market research company founded in 2010. My name is Elwa. I'm in China for、uh, eight years, and、uh, I now have a company dedicated to VR and AR,、uh, based in Shanghai for、uh, five years now. So、uh, I had the chance to work with several clients, you know, based around Asia.、Uh, it gives me, I guess, a good overview of what's happening in,、uh, in, uh, in virtual reality and now augmented reality that becomes、uh, from this year something.、Um, my clients are、uh, travel business, so I have some people like、uh, Club Med, like、uh, Hyatt Hotel,、uh, cars like Peugeot Citroën. I have. Uh, like a supermarket, like the metro supermarket, and Logitech in technology. It's quite vast. It goes all around. They're usually based、uh, here in Shanghai, but also in Hong Kong, sometimes in Korea, sometimes a bit around, which travel、uh, a bit around Asia. Can you provide a few figures that can help to understand how developed the VR market in China is? How many VR headsets do we have in the world? It's not that much, no.、Uh, So we know that, for example, on Steam, Steam is the main、uh, platform for gamers.、Uh, so on Steam, you have、um, so you can、uh, you have Steam VR. So Steam is a major platform and has hundreds of, of millions of users. I, I think so. And we know that on Steam, because they do survey every month, so every month we follow that. We know that there are two million uh, of uh, monthly active users、uh, of VR on Steam. Two million. Is it a lot?、Uh, I mean, yeah, but it's not being a lot just for Steam. So it, on Steam, it means that it's people having quite big computers because、uh, it's really for a hardcore gamer.、Uh, VR on a computer、uh, requires this kind of computer,、uh, hardcore、um, big computer. So, so、uh, it's it's quite not so accessible. Then we know that there are at least five、uh, million uh, of uh, PlayStation VR being、uh, sold. So again, not so much in China because PlayStation、uh, in China、uh, is not allowed to to really sell a lot of games. So there is not a, a lot of license、uh, for games. So it's, it's it's difficult to for PlayStation to actually sell seriously in China. But in the world, a few months ago, it was still five million.、Um, and we can imagine that、uh, there are also a few millions on the whole Oculus ecosystem,、uh, Oculus Rift, Oculus Rift S, and Oculus Quest. Um, we can imagine that maybe there are between two and five million. So maybe in, in total, right now we have twenty、uh, million, maybe thirty million max uh, VR uh, monthly VR、uh, users. It's, it's not that big, you know. And、uh, out of that,、um, we know that、uh, only Steam is、uh, accessible in China. So,、uh, how many users do we really have in China? We don't know. You know, in China, you need to have a VPN to really access the cool thing.、Uh, so there is a lot of barrier, you know, to to make it、uh, existing. So、uh, maybe a few million, maybe one, two million.、Uh, we don't know. You know, so I just guess. I'm trying to guess. And then in professional uh, usage, uh, the main VR headset is still Oculus. So it means that Oculus doesn't have a real presence in China. Cannot have because it belongs to Facebook, so you don't have like a, a real, you know, a, a real、um, subsidiary of Oculus here. Even if the demand would be gigantic, you know, it would be great for them to be here. So it's, it's like it's probably quite small, you know, it's probably quite small what's happening in China compared to the rest of the world uh, because uh, because of the Great Firewall and many other、uh, factors. Who are the main VR players in the Chinese market? The main players in the world are、uh, Oculus, which belongs to uh, Facebook. Uh, you have uh, Sony uh, with the PlayStation, which is Japanese, and uh, in China uh, you have、uh, different players that try to exist.、Uh, one of the most known one being HTC. Maybe you've heard about HTC.、Uh, HTC is a Taiwanese-based company, but、uh, very、uh, implemented in China because they are Taiwanese,、uh, so they have a strong presence in Beijing. And they、uh, they try to、uh, sell VR headset and, and to sell a VR ecosystem、uh, in China, which is、uh, China based, and it's、uh, built on the other side of the firewall. You know? VR, we have to deal with the firewall, like many things. So、um, uh, this company tried to、uh, build an ecosystem which is、uh, dedicated for China. It's not working very well,、uh, but they are trying very hard. You have other brands uh, like uh, Pico in Beijing. Pico is also a VR headset maker. 
uh, more successful than HTC, where they are uh, building a lot of uh, standalone VR headsets. So standalone means that you don't have any wire, you just have the headset. You don't have to plug it to a computer necessarily, and uh, you can uh, enjoy a VR experience or a game uh, with that. You have uh, other uh, brands uh, called, uh, for example, DPVR, which is a startup from Shanghai. Startup, so it's big now. Uh, which is also trying to exist in this uh, super little market uh, in China, uh, doing a headset that are a bit less successful than Pico. Uh, and finally, I would say that you have uh, 3D glasses, uh, which is also uh, which is also a, a player here that I, I, I actually never tried. We are talking about very very small companies, you know, uh, because in China the VR market is actually not very big. Uh, it means that even for me, for my clients, uh, we are uh, still mainly use Oculus, uh, which is the American brand. Uh, uh, it's even if it's not connected, uh, even if you cannot really access it uh, from here in China, uh, it is probably the most used uh, headset in China, where many people are using VPN to uh, to access the content from from the US and uh, and enjoy it. So yes, the the ecosystem here is super small i mean if it's really china based because uh, uh because the, the, the main the, the great vr headset are still foreign headsets and uh, and uh, this is how i mean this is what we what we use from here what is the main vr technology used in china we so it's pretty now standardized so we we are using uh, uh all the main vr headset are uh, uh, what we call six degree of freedom so what does it mean six degree of freedom? It means that when you wear the headset and if you are doing a movement laterally, for example, or a translation uh, within this VR world, uh, you will also move left or right, you know, or you will move uh, in, uh, yeah, laterally. Uh, if you have a three degree of freedom a VR headset, uh, you cannot do this movement. You will always, you will on, only do a, a movement around an axis and you will only move your head into um, into just pivoting. Okay. Um, so now the all the main uh, VR headsets are uh, six degree of freedom. So even Oculus uh, abandoned the uh, the idea to produce a three degree of freedom. But in China, uh, you still have because because the market didn't really start yet. You still have a lot of brands trying to uh, to arrive with three degree of freedom uh, VR headset. Uh, we can take the example of uh, Huawei. So Huawei is now releasing a new super small uh, VR headset, which is three degree of freedom, which is, looks very outdated for the West because uh, nobody would sell that anymore. But, but in China, it's maybe the beginning of, of something new. And, uh, and you can plug it to your phone. So they are uh, uh, imagining that uh, using 5G of the phone, you will be able to have great content coming in this way. So um, we have uh, more and more little VR headsets uh, that will be released. So, which are you know the size, almost the size of, of regular glasses now, uh, but it it's really um, lacking the main the main um, concept of moving all around. So this is um, what we are at uh, in China. So we are a bit like I, mean, I would say like three years of delay compared to the rest of the world. Uh, on that, on that things, so, you know, the hardware maker are doing something which was existing in the, in the West uh, three years ago. In which sectors is VR technology most utilized in China? I think now uh, I see uh, the, the the architecture and construction being the, the most important. Uh, but we can talk about healthcare. Uh, we can talk about uh, especially education in healthcare uh, because. Uh, so you, you understand that VR is a sensitive topic because it is a content concept. So uh, it suffers from the firewall, it suffers from censorship. Uh, so the game, uh, the game in China, do not receive a number of licenses uh, to actually being released on the on the Chinese market. So everything which is very consumer doesn't work very well. Okay, but when you are thinking about B two B application. Uh, like uh, education, uh, uh, learning, uh, this can work. So, and and I think that you have many startups uh, now uh, trying to, uh, to 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 dominate this market and to sell VR headsets to universities and to to sell like a platform, an ecosystem, and uh, uh, to that and with class. Um, 
in healthcare, we see uh, several startups around the world and in China uh, doing, uh, yes, classroom for nurses. I can imagine also education for uh, uh, private, uh, for, for, for companies where, you know, engineers need to do a specific movement like in the nuclear plant, you know, something very dangerous and they need to, uh, to do maintenance operation uh, and they do it once in a year, you know, so have to, they have to be trained to do this specific operation. Uh, very well. So you have uh, this kind of thing uh, uh, very well. Uh, you, you have that, that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, I see education uh, starting a little bit, uh, application in healthcare, uh, I think construction, yes, design, yeah, all this kind of thing. Any questions? We will find an expert to answer them. Drop your questions in the comments or send us an email, dx at dashwayconsulting.com.